Hey everybody, if you like what you're seeing, stay tuned. I'll show you how you too can achieve these graphics and this smoothness with the Oculus Quest 2. I've been getting a lot of requests, so I thought it was something that people might find useful if I shared all my settings and my configuration. These flights that you see right now, I'm using the Google Earth mod. And as you can see, I do not have the bloom shut off or the ambient occlusion, which I know is one of the first steps everyone says to shut off. But you don't get scenes like this if you shut those off. So let me show you how I have everything set up. So I use Virtual Desktop, the Oculus app. I think it was $20 in the store. You can see as I'm running, I just flew for about three and a half hours and my temperature does not get above 83. Now the speed's ramping back down, but the boost goes up to about 1900 on my system when I'm flying. And yeah, the fans are running, but with headphones on, I don't hear the fans. And so I really don't care. So those are the temperatures I'm getting. So let me show you now all my settings. Now you saw the graphics I was getting in those scenes and what you'll see at the end and you'll you can watch any of the videos I've done this past day or two and you'll see the quality and I don't have to have a lot of things up on high or ultra some of them I do I might put buildings on high when I fly in the city I might turn water up on high if I'm flying in the ocean or over the ocean trees maybe I'll turn them up if I'm flying over the mountains I I I find those to be fluid. I don't leave those the same. But you see, I don't have to have a lot of things on. But I can have bloom on. I can have light shafts on, which help at the airport for the runway lights and taxi lights and some of the reflections on and so forth. I should mention that I have the OpenXR NIS Scalar tool running as well, which is responsible for a lot of the reason that I can have these settings. Traffic. I'm not really interested in it, but I like to see planes at the airport. I do not have photogrammetry on. I, I don't really care for the way some of my cities look when I use that. No rolling cache, no stored cache. I've done those, but I haven't noticed much of a difference in those. And, you know, you can see I have everything set on realism. I don't have any any sort of ad, um, assistance on or anything like that when I fly. So every flight that you see me fly... I have realism maxed out on that. And when you see the mountain flights, you'll see that it's a little bumpy, but if you fly mountains, you, you have to expect that. Uh, that's not me flying, that's that's the plane dealing with the, the updrafts from the mountains. So now I'll show you some of my other settings. We'll go into the G-Force and you'll see that I do have the latest driver. We'll go to my NVIDIA settings. You'll see I don't have much turned on here. Everything the default, obviously, on the first page. But under the application, this is it. I have the one setting on anti-aliasing. Anti Everything default, default, default. Then I have just these settings down here. And that's it. Nothing, nothing really changed too drastically, even in my NVIDIA settings. So, okay, so, uh, and yeah, so you, what you're seeing right now is my virtual desktop screen, by the way, not my actual monitor. Uh, so gaming settings, game mode, I, I have it on. I almost always have. I've tried it with it off. I don't notice much. And uh, you'll see I don't have anything prioritized here. Now, my laptop is dedicated to flight simming. There really is nothing installed on this computer. If you were to look down by my clock and my icons, I have like three icons down there, and that's only when the game's running. Uh, HAGS, the hardware accelerated off, variable ref refresh rate, I have on. So, uh, But again, like I said, it, you know, when I'm flying the game and you look down at the icons in the tray, you'll see the software that I'm running for the game. But once I shut all that down, there's nothing down there but my network 
and then um, my clock. So this is a virtual desktop streamer, automatic for the preferred codec. The only settings that I have enabled, you can see on the side here, nothing much. And I, I don't really play with this at all. I mean, there's nothing here really to set up. But that's the visual, this is the visual desktop streamer. You have to download that, and that streams to your headset. But it actually goes through your, wire, your router first. So I have a LAN cable in my laptop. Um, you can see I'm using the Google Mod here for the Earth. Steam VR, I'm not going to launch that because that would actually kick me right into it and you'll see that because I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to get into VR mode and I can put this down take my headset off walk away come back in an hour and of course my headset's plugged in and in standby for power but I don't plug a cable in I'm completely wireless here I can get out walk around my plane and I like that um, so this again we're using the Google Earth mod right now but I get the same kind of smoothness with the um, the, the Bing maps and yeah I'm going to pick a nice big jet here at 747 which pretty complicated cockpit to see and I will tell you that having watched my own videos plenty of times as I'm editing them you'd be surprised how a five minute video can take three hours to edit um, so I do appreciate people that watch them because <laughs> it's a lot of work believe it or not but it's so much fun flying the flights for three hours to get that video it's okay um, but the editing power okay so I just hit control tab that was it I had the game I hit control tab it launched Steam VR for me and it put me in now I cut out all the part with the ATC but it was just very quick loading. I, I had the game set up, the planes on the cockpit, uh, I mean on the runway, and I hit control tab. And now I usually will have Steam VR running beforehand, but in this case I didn't. And you saw it just popped it right up, it ran it, and boom, my headset had to, I'm streamed. And I, I think the, the quality I'm getting is probably the best I have seen for the Quest 2. And, Mike, and Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. But I'll leave that up to you, and I'll let you just enjoy this flight. But to me, it's as easy as leaving on a jet plane. about this cockpit folks this is some pretty nice detail right here not quite this sharp in the headset but close enough that I can read it and I'm happy with it when I'm flying Hey, thanks for watching. I really hope that this helps some of you out there. Remember, folks, everybody's system is different. Even if we bought the same exact computers, they're going to be different. And the only thing you can count on with a computer is that it won't work when you most need it to. And that comes with over 20 years in the IT industry <laughs> telling you that. But you can, uh, you can make them do what you want them to do if you just be patient with it and take your time and research what you need to do. 
So again, you know, everybody's experiences are going to be different, but I sure hope that this helps some of you. Thanks for watching. See you up in the air.